we found so many tires. The sofa. Second year, the award-winning Job Corps program known as Stream Sweepers rose to meet a huge challenge during the summer of 2014, namely to rid long stretches of two scenic rivers in Virginia's Piedmont region of as much trash and man-made debris as could be safely carried out on a flotilla of canoes. It was a massive effort. Using all private and corporate funding, not a penny of government money, Stream Sweepers hired a dozen high school and college-aged young men and women to return almost 40 miles of the Robinson and Rapidan rivers to a more pristine natural state. So the Stream Sweepers program was a great fit for us because they were seeking to do some of the same things we like to do. We all live and work in this area, so we wanted to, to have this river be a great resource uh, for these students to learn, but a great resource for generations to come. So we did, um, it was between 17 and 18 miles on the lower Rapidan River from Madison Mills down to Raccoon Fort. And then we did um, a little over 20 miles of the Robinson River from just below Banco down to the confluence. Compared to the previous year, Stream Sweepers 2014 needed three times as many workers to cover about twice the distance. Well, we anticipated that we would run into more work on the Robinson. So we had four young men on the Rap Rapidan, the Woodbury boys that worked with us. And then we had six uh, boys and girls on the Robinson. The first week was spent in the classroom and on the river where the students learned about everything from riverbank assessment to macroinvertebrate identification. Next, the teams floated each river to identify and GPS mark trash sites as well as to make notes on the overall health of the riverbed, riverbank, and canopy. And new this year was the collection of water samples to be analyzed by the National Institutes of Health. And then came the cleanup phase. It was so much more than we had anticipated. It was just, the cleanup went on and on and on. Also on the lower Rapidan, we had four days of cleanup for the stretch of river that we were doing. On the Robinson, it was seven days of cleanup because we had to go back and redo five mile sections a second time because we could not get everything the first time. It was very hard work and it was very dirty work and I told them that in the beginning when I interviewed them I said this is muddy, dirty, sweaty, hot, you're going to be exhausted and all of them were, you know, that didn't phase them at all and then we got into it and it was, it was more than they thought and but they, they rose to the occasion. They really felt like this was a valuable type of work. Just, it was relentless. <laughs> you, you'd see a tire here and a tire there. And, because we were putting in 10 hour days on the river, on the Robinson in particular. We were on the river at 7.30 in the morning. We weren't off until 5.30 or after in the evenings. You know, they were really working together. They watched out for each other. They constantly, if someone was working on a piece of 
trash and seemed to be having some difficulty. There were always others that were saying, hey, do you need a hand with that? We had a lot of fun. I enjoyed all of them. And there was crushing disappointment because of objects too big or too dangerous to move, particularly at a massive dump site near Somerville Ford on the Rapidan River. I couldn't let the crew, the Woodbury boys on the Rapidan crew, tackle that. There was so much rusted metal, old farm gates, barbed wire, just pieces of, of rusted metal, um, tires, appliances. That yeah, it's not light. The work did not end at the riverbank. The trash had to be deposited at staging points all along the way. Every scrap had to be documented and then they had to haul it to the Orange County landfill for disposal. And finally, the students prepared reports for all the participating landowners along the way. Overall, both of these rivers are very healthy. Um, there are areas where there have been trash dumps. Those things are easily taken care of with um, people that care about getting all of that debris out of there. There was a sofa sitting in the river, at the curve in the river. I think it had a Hoover vacuum on it. <laughs> Eventually, when we started working on the Robinson, the sofa wasn't there any longer. It had gotten moved during the high water time. We had to take it apart. We wanted to float it out all in one piece on a canoe, thinking, okay, that that's just would be apropos. You know, here it was sitting in one piece in the river. To remove it in one piece would be really cool. But it was so sodden and heavy, and there was just no getting it out of there in one piece. And it was half submerged in the mud and the muck. And so they had to dig it out, cut it apart, and float it down river in pieces. I guess if you don't think of the river as a water source, and a wildlife habitat and a thing of beauty in your area if you just think of it as a way to get rid of stuff. I guess that would be the mentality, but I really don't understand. At least we left the river better off than it was before we started. A whole lot better off. Yes, it was a great sense of accomplishment, but uh, you know, there's a little bit of sadness too because I know that we didn't get it all. They come out of this so aware of the conditions of the river, the health of the river, ecologically and as far as um, debris that has been either thrown in or washed in. They become very, very sensitive to all of that. Um, and I hope that that sense of um, ownership that they have with the condition of the river is passed on to their friends when they use the river responsibly. And I think overall, the more the community understands the value of this program for these young people and also for us, the users of the river and the appreciation that we have for the river, I think the more the community um, buys into the whole understanding of the importance of the river, the more everyone will use it more responsibly. Mm -hmm.